All right, what's on the bench today? A little power supply, it's a real cutie. Um, I was at Anchor Electronics the other day and uh, the owner uh, said she had something for me and she wanted me to have this. Uh, it was her husband's, so it was on her husband's uh, bench and uh, she wanted me to have it. So it is a cute little power supply and it has some sentimental value obviously to her, but it has some really interesting uh, value to me uh, because of who made it. Uh, it's from a company I've never ever heard of before, but it's just a couple miles down the road here. Uh, Campbell, uh, California. Uh, Campbell's a cute little town. If you go there, it's mostly, uh, mostly restaurants and stuff now, but uh, yeah, Pacific Radionics a power pack, uh, 115 volts and uh, 50 volts DC 0.4 amps. Uh, model number PP-20-3. If anybody has a if anybody has a schematic for this thing, let me know. I've looked around. I haven't found one yet. Uh, but uh, I did plug it in and it doesn't do anything. So uh, probably dry capacitors would be my guess. Uh, it seems to have some strange behavior. So let's take a look inside. I've taken the screws off already. All right, so it's nicely packed. Uh, this uh, transformer here fits in nicely. It has a little bracket here and uh, all the wires are twisted together. That makes it nice and neat. Uh, here's a capacitor that probably needs replacing. Uh, 50 microfarads. And yeah, underneath, there's a big one there. Oh, there's two of them down there. Uh, yeah, those are going to need replacing. Um, so it doesn't, I mean, not having any schematics, we're going to have to kind of like guess on this thing, but it's probably pretty straightforward. Uh, it looks like there's a two bridge rectifiers here. Um, there's one op amp that does the uh, voltage regulation. Uh, a couple of diodes down here. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, hmm. let's see what's the best way to get into this thing. I think we want to take this board off here. So yeah, let's let's do that and take a peek underneath. There's a a little uh, cable here that disconnects these two boards to make it easier to work on. So there you go. Um, yeah, let me pop this. Uh, Pop this one off. All right, sad news. Um, I did replace some uh, electrolytics in here. Um, when I took them out, they actually tested okay. Ooh, but they're really old. Um, this is a nice capacitor. Look at the size of it. 650 um, microfarads at 75 volts. It'd be hard to replace this actually with anything better. So I'm not sure exactly what the technology is here. It does have kind of a rubber a rubber bumper on the end though. Anyway, uh, I put uh, the equivalence of everything in here just to see if it works. And if I got it working, I'd probably buy some nice caps to make it to look make it look better. But when I got it all recapped and turned it on, it didn't do anything. It had the same symptoms as it did before. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. And then um, I turned it on a second time and it made high voltage arcing sounds. <laughs> Not good. High voltage arcing sounds and then it blew the fuse. So I thought, okay, well maybe I did put in good caps and they had a better ESR value and it was drawing a little more current. I mean, there's no load on it, right? So, um, so I replaced the fuse, did it a second time, it blew the fuse again. Um, and then I tried it a third time because I, I wanted to see where the arcing was. If I could visibly see the arcing, maybe it would give me some clue of what was what the problem was. So I, I replaced the fuse with a slow blow so it would last a little bit. And then it made some terrible arcing sounds again. And uh, then it got quiet. And I didn't ever see where the damage was, okay? But what I did notice was this transformer was getting hot. So my best guess is that the insulation uh, broke down on this transformer and it arced over to itself. So there's some shorting, shorted windings on here. So yeah, it is getting, it is getting toasty. I think I'll pull the transformer out just to measure it. See if I can see a short. I think it's on the secondary winding. So there's a primary winding 
let's see, can I see, can you see this on camera? So the AC goes in this side, okay, here's the AC, it goes into the, into the uh, transformer and then it has two DC windings. One DC winding comes out here, goes into a bridge rectifier and onto this cap, and that was giving me 50, 51 volts. So that's good. So that side was working. This side goes through a bridge rectifier and um, it was only, uh, so on the, in, on the input, I could measure the AC as well. On the, on the secondary, I'm not even quite sure if this is the cap or whatever, but on secondary, I was only getting two volts. So yeah, I think that secondary winding broke down. Um, and so I'm not getting any, um, of this extra, so what I think it, of it, it is, this is the primary side, and then this is a secondary side that creates a negative voltage. Whenever you create a power supply that goes to zero, you need to have a negative voltage to run your op amps and stuff. So I believe this runs uh, a little section here to give you 12 volts or something, negative 12 volts, and it's dead. Um, so, yeah. I just think it's dead. And uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll pull this transformer out and just measure to see if the windings are, are definitely shorted out or, or something is wrong with it. Oh, it's too bad. I really like it. Um, I might use it as a donor, donor case though. It is nice. If I pull this transformer out, I get this much room in here, right? And I should be able to maybe put in my own design. Um, I could certainly put it in a switcher. That would fit in here. Um, and uh, kind of redo this and maybe design a PC board. I I've, in the back of my mind, thought about maybe doing a power supply project. People are asking, how do you, uh, how do you regulate down to zero volts? You can get something like a 317 and then you're limited to 1.4 volts, but everybody wants to be able to go down to zero volts. So I have designed things like that in the past. Maybe I'll do it uh, do it for here and have a big pass pen, pass transistor on the back so we can go uh, we can go down to uh, go down uh, or up in current. I have five three maybe a three volt uh, three amp sorry three amp supply something like that. Uh, but I have all the other things that I need. Uh, so yeah. Let me pull this out here and just measure it for fun. All right, uh, safety first. Um, if you're gonna do this, um, be very, very careful because this is lethal voltages. Now, um, I have a uh, 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 isolation transformer in the back of the lab. There's an isolation transformer. So these, these are isolated from ground. So that makes it a bit safer but it's still very dangerous. So just be careful of that. I'm going to bring in 120 volts here and then we'll measure this output on uh, AC volts and we get 81 volts. All right. And then let's go over to this one over here. And I get 57 volts. Well, maybe the transformer's okay. I think that's good news. Maybe uh, maybe there's something else wrong somewhere. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a schematic for this thing. But if I have a good transformer, I can just I can just build my own circuit. So that's pretty cool. I like this. Um, the other thing I can be taking a look at is um, that's the conditions that I'm inputting. Hello, focus. My hand in the way. Yeah. So. Um, I'm putting in 117 volts at 0 0.03 amps. So it's not drawing much current. So if there was a shorted winding or something, we would expect it to have maybe a little bit more, more going on there, but I only have 3.2 watts of power. So that doesn't sound too bad. And uh, I'm putting my hand on the transformer. It's fairly cold. So, hmm. Okay. Well, maybe I don't have to give, give up on it quite yet. Uh, if the transformer is good, I can use the two windings and uh, maybe just take a look at the, uh, let me turn this off so I don't kill myself. Um, yeah, the only other uh, thing going on here is uh, I've got, uh, let's see, 
Can I zoom down on that any further? Yeah, I can. Oh, there you go. Just a second here. There you go. So, like I said, there's this section of bridge and that section of bridge, and there's this one, one um, capacitor here, and that one's working. And then there's this, this section over here, and I don't know. I don't know if it's this. Maybe this capacitor is dead. I don't know. I'm gonna poke around some more. Well, <laughs> so I had the transformer out, and it worked just fine. So I put it back in, and it didn't work at all. <laughs> so then I took it back out, and it still didn't work. Um, so then I found that the fine winding on the AC input was broken. And I think that was the zappy zap that I heard when I first turned it on. I think there was some short, there was a lot of current draw, and it went zappy zap, and uh, that little wire was just kind of touching in there. Um, luckily it was long enough that I could solder it back down, and kind of an iffy soldering. I don't know if you've ever worked on transformers, but kind of an iffy soldering, but I think it's okay now. And um, I've replaced capacitors, and I can now turn it on, and I can actually measure some voltages now. So let's, can you see that? Yeah, so I've also figured out that this bridge is the main bridge. This is where the, this is where the output goes, okay? So if I measure across that bridge, I get 111 volts. So uh, that's a pretty healthy primary for this system. The uh, four diodes are here, but the main capacitor that these four diodes feeds is underneath this board way down at the bottom. So kind of, kind of funky, but that's where it is. The other bridge over here is the secondary bridge which I thought would be low voltage, but it is 70 volts. So it's a, it, it's on this capacitor here. So yes, there's 100 volts over here, 70 volts over here. But then I thought, okay, the reason it's giving me high voltage is because this Zener diode is bad. But if I measure across the Zener diode, uh, I get 9.6 volts. So that Zener is okay. There's a Zener down over here, measure across him, 8.8 .8 volts. So there's two Zeners. And all the other diodes check out all the, I've checked uh, diodes on all of the um, transistors. I checked that back, back transistor. Everybody seems fine as far as the diode check is concerned, uh, but I'm still not getting any voltage on the output, okay? So, um, turn this off. Um, yeah, pretty high voltages inside. I, I, can't imagine that's not normal. I don't know what else is going on. Um, so the capacitors that I took out are only 75 volt capacitors. And you can see we had 111 on that one. So right now I have 400 volt capacitors everywhere. And just for trial, there's one that, and they're all, I have a big bag of 47 microfarad at 400 volts. So I just put those everywhere. And um, there is one in the bottom that's supposed to be 650. It was this one here, 680, uh, 680 microfarads. But it's rated at 75 volts. So I don't know. I'm just getting a bigger voltage than what they say. So I need to replace it with some pretty heavy duty capacitors. So maybe that was it. Maybe the capacitor started to arc. I don't, I don't know yet. Uh, but anyway, it's, uh, I'm able to power it up and not blow a fuse. I'm able to power up and actually get voltages on the um, the bridge circuits now. So the raw the raw voltages. I wasn't able to do that before. Um, the transformer. I did find a weird thing going on. Um, I also believe that the heating of the transformer and the reason that blew out was there was a short somewhere. I don't know where. I'm suspecting maybe a capacitor, but I don't know, know that for sure. Anyway. Uh, everything seems to be much healthier. The uh, uh, transformer is staying cool. I'm not drawing a lot of current. Um, so next steps is to try to figure out what's dead. Now, um, I would like to go in and kind of hot wire the pass transistor on to see if it can at least output voltage to the front. I'm not quite sure where all that happens yet.
there are some funny things in the circuit. So uh, there certainly is a uh, op amp that does the does the heavy lifting for voltage um, current. It is an old LM uh, 709, so uh, that could be dead. I need to figure out where power comes into this and whether it was over voltage or not. I still don't. I still don't know that. Uh, and then there are three other transistors that uh, one of them I can imagine. One of them I can imagine feeding the big pass transistor. So I, I, I'm imagining that maybe this transistor powers the, the the big transistor in the back. But I don't know why there are these two transistors. These are pretty heavy duty uh, transistors unless they are buffers for certain voltages and stuff. I, I, I don't know what's going on there, but we have some at least one amp uh, transistors in the circuit that I don't understand. I should probably just trace the circuit out and draw a schematic. That's probably what I need to do. Um, yeah. I have traced it out enough to know that this raw voltage is rectified by these bridges and a capacitor on the bottom. It then goes into the pass transistor. It comes out of the pass transistor and goes into a power resistor that's used to monitor the current on the front panel here, the half half amp maximum. And then it goes to the front to the front the front connector here. So that all makes sense to me. So the things that could be broken now is probably the uh, probably the uh, op amp. I, but I before I replace that op amp, I need to make sure it's getting the correct voltages. Um, it might just be getting over voltaged and uh, got zapped. Thank you.